Why praying in tongues is so important to our Christian walk and Christian life in the Spirit. So I want to talk to you today about praying in tongues, what the Bible has to say about it, and the reason for it. What do we accomplish praying in tongues? But first, thank you for being with me, and thank you for being my family. I pray the Lord today will really richly, and I mean richly, bless you this wonderful Monday. And to Jesus be all the glory and God. People said, Amen and Amen. Let's just pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Oh, Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your blessed word. Where would we be without your precious word? Thank you for your wonderful, wonderful, holy word. And now, Lord, I pray you'll touch us mightily in our hearts through your word I pray and glorify your holy name in our life, meeting every need in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians 12 right now. I'll be, you know, I want to begin dealing with first on, and we're going we're gonna to focus on tongues in the church first before we go into tongues in our private life because we have to understand what the Bible teaches all about it. And I'm going to continue the teaching tomorrow. So please, please, please be with me tomorrow because there's a lot to talk about here. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10. To another, the working of miracles. To another, another prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Notice it says there's more than one. Diverse kinds of tongues. We'll talk about that. And to another, the interpretation interpretation of tongues. Now, let's go first with to 1 Corinthians 14, first of all, to say a little more about this. We're going to read verse 5. For Paul writes and says, I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. And that word here is in order to prophesy. I would that you all speak with tongues in order that you prophesied, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. So when the Bible talks about praying in the Spirit and praying with the Spirit, there are two different things. Praying in the Spirit is where the Holy Spirit uses your vessel to call on the Lord and to pray in English and in tongues many times. And I'll explain why I say many times. Praying with the Spirit is tongues. It's the gift being used, okay? So when where Paul you know, talks about pray in the Spirit always, he means both English and tongues because there is, there is a place where the presence of God takes over, you see? And then now you're really in the Spirit. You can pray with the Spirit, meaning tongues, without the presence of God being present. You cannot pray in the Spirit, in English and tongues, without the presence of the Lord being present. Have you noticed how sometimes when you pray in tongues, it sounds like repetitious, but then when Jesus becomes real, it becomes a real language? That's what I'm talking about. So you can tell the difference. You can tell the difference. When the presence of God is there, it's in the Spirit because He takes over. Okay? Now, we'll talk more about that to clarify that because to some people, maybe they've never heard what I said. Look, I have been in the faith over 50 years, so it's, <laughs> it's taken me time to learn all these things. Okay? But let's, let's, let, let's focus on prayer with the Spirit now rather than in the Spirit Let's focus on with the Spirit, where we literally activate it with I will pray, I will sing, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians. All right, now, does this differ from the tongues in private use and private life? The answer is, of course, yes. Because here, Paul is talking about tongues in the assembly, tongues in the assembly. So he begins by saying in, Chapter 12, remember, 
And here again, let's just look one more time to notice it in verse 10. He says, to another. He's talking about when we come together in, 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 a, in a church meeting, assembly. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To, to another, discerning of spirits. To other diverse kinds of tongues, and so on. Because interpretations are not needed in privacy. Because he says to another, interpretation of tongues, all these works that one and self, same spirit divided to every man severally as he will, for the body is one. So he's talking about the assembly and the church being together when tongues is, is used in this portion. And in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 5, he's still talking about the assembly. He says, I wish that you all were you together, that is, speak with tongues, but that you rather, or in order that you may prophesy, because greater is he that prophesies than he that speaks with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. So in this two, uh, two scriptures, he's talking about tongues in church, tongues in the assembly. We don't see a lot of that today, sadly, but we need to. Now, so uh, this speaks of tongues in the assembly, not in, the, in private life. Now, let's also look at Acts 2. Now, this, this is what he means by diverse kinds of tongues. So the first time we saw the gift of tongues used was in Acts 2, verse 4 through 6, because here's where tongues is understood as a real language that people heard and understood. You see, there's three kinds of tongues. Number one, the, the tongues of Acts 2 that they understood, people understood. Two, the tongues we speak that are mysteries unto God, that's in 1 Corinthians, that nobody understands. Number three, the tongues that has to be interpreted to edify the church. So in Acts 2, it talks about the tongues that came on the apostles and disciples, the 120, that began speaking in unknown tongues, and the crowd heard them speak in their own language. Number two, Paul talks about the tongues for mysteries unto God that he said no man understands, even we don't understand what we're saying, and it says we get edified with those. So he that prays in tongues edifies himself, the Bible says. But there's a third tongue that is used in the church, in the assembly, mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12.10, in 1 Corinthians 14.5, where once interpreted, it edifies the church. So three types of tongues. The first one, Acts 2, 4 through 6, it talks about that. Let's just go to Acts right now, chapter 2 and verse 4 through 6. It says, and they all were filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling in the Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under, under heaven. When this was noise abroad, the multitudes came together, were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So that's the first one. The second one is 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 1 to verse 4 says, Follow after charity, desire spiritual gifts, rather that you may prophesy. But he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man. You see that? There's difference between Acts 2 and 1 Corinthians. But unto God, for no man understands him. Well, they understood him in Acts 2, Acts uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, nobody understands him. How be it in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Uh, all right, that's it. Now, let's look at Acts, uh, at, at, sorry, 1 Corinthians. Tongues for the church now, the, the third type of tongues, is 1 Corinthians 14, verse 28. You know, a lot of people sadly don't understand some of this. So that's why I felt today you need to know. And I'm going to focus on tomorrow mostly on prayer in tongues when we pray individually, ourselves and privacy, what that actually causes, what that brings about in our life, it's incredible. Okay, let's talk about now the third one. That's 1 Corinthians 14, 28. If there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. Because it says in verse 27, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or three at the most, and by course, and let one interpret. If there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and so forth. So, this is for the church, the third one. Now, let's talk about something else. Um, 
may all believers speak in tongues? Well, the Lord gave us the answer very clearly, where, where he said, uh, very clearly, them that believe, Mark, let's look at Mark 16, 17. So yes, every believer can and should pray in tongues. And I'll show you why should. It's very important, frankly. That's why I'm talking about this. Because we are now in a dangerous time in the world. And praying with the Spirit, praying in tongues has become more important to us because it literally brings victory to our life and confusion to the enemy, as I'll show you, and much more, much more. Mark 16 and verse 17, the signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. So he says, Jesus said, them that believe. So every believer, you have the right to ask for the gift of tongues. And I pray you do that today if you haven't. Okay? Now, what's the purpose for tongues in general? In general. Now, we'll, we'll focus more on the private one later but what is the real re like reason for it? Well, the Bible tells us for edification. Number one, edification. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4, and in Jude, but let's look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. It's for edification. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But we also edify the church once interpreted, okay? But edification is also mentioned in Jude 20, because there we are told, and I'm going to explain this to you even though I was going to wait on this. I think it's important I really talk about this now. Jude has one chapter. It says in verse 20, but you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, let me, let me stop here and explain something to you. When I'm in the presence of God, and I am praying, at some point, the Lord's presence becomes very tangible. At which point, without me thinking, without me deciding, I start praying in tongues. The Holy Spirit takes over without my consent, without my decision, because I've already surrendered to him earlier. And so when I surrendered earlier, I gave him the permission and consent to do whatever he wants. In the Crusades, or in meetings I've had, like a few days ago in Colorado Springs, and I sometimes notice it, it just happens. The presence of God comes, next thing you know, I'm praying in tongues, not realizing I'm praying in tongues. That is what is meant by prayer in the Holy Ghost. Now, sometimes it happens also where it's not tongues, it's English. You begin praying in English in your own language, wherever you live, not realizing you're actually praying and why you're praying that prayer because the Holy Spirit now took over. And sometimes it comes with deep groanings. It's, it's like depth beyond description. That is what is said here to us in Jude. Now, the difference is, what I decide, and the Lord decides. What I decide, I can pray in tongues right now, okay? But that's my decision. What I decide is praying with the Spirit. When He decides to pray through me, it's in the Spirit. Maybe you've never heard that explained this way. It's happened to you, I'm sure. When you are alone with the Lord, or you're in a beautiful service, where the presence of Jesus is just flowing so beautifully. Next thing you know, you're crying, and your tongue begins by itself. You're praying alone by yourself without your, you even knowing you're doing it or decided to do it because the Holy Spirit took over. And that tongue is, is different than the one where you pray and decide. So let, let's say right now, if I decide to pray in tongues, and I can easily. I've just prayed in tongues with me deciding. But if I'm in prayer and the presence of God is there, it's not any longer me. It's the Holy Spirit through me. 
That's what it means in the spirit. So sometimes in the spirit is used for both English or your own language and tongues. Jude says, dear God, I'm sensing it already just talking about, you know. Beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Now, this actually happens also when we pray in the Spirit, English or your language or tongues. Now, I, I, I hope, I hope this really has helped you. So there is that edification. The other thing that happens, the other purpose, is it actually helps in prayer tremendously. Do you, do you recall in Romans 8 where Paul talks about that the Holy Spirit knows our infirmities? Let's look at verse 26. This is one of my favorites, by the way. So he says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought. Meaning, we don't even know where to begin, how to start, English or tongues. But the Spirit takes over, begins to make intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. That's happened to me and you many times without us knowing we're doing it. Okay? So, not only for, ed for edifying and building ourselves, but also aiding us in prayer. And number three, in order that prophecy may be triggered. And you remember, I just showed it to you, and one more time, in 1 Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 14, and Paul says that so beautifully, frankly, in verse 5, where he says, I wish, I would that you all speak with tongues, but in order that you may prophesy. And here it says, rather than, okay? So this is really important. It aids us in prophecy. It triggers the prophetic. If you want to prophesy, get in, in the presence of God. Be quiet in the presence of God. Let Jesus become real. That tongues will come forth out of you and it'll trigger the, the prophetic. God will start talking to you and through you to others. This is where you get prophetic messages for other people. When you are in the spirit, that gift is triggered beautifully. All right, now, something else I want to begin to talk about because Isaiah gives us an amazing thing that happens when we are in that place in the spirit and tongues becomes alive in us. And so he says in Isaiah 28, 11, with stammering lips and another tongue, and that means spiritual tongue, will he speak to these people because nowhere in the, in the Old Covenant do we see people speaking in tongues. Uh, God is speaking about the coming of the Holy Spirit, where he says to Israel, with stammering lips and another tongue. Do you, do you notice sometimes when you pray in tongues and the Spirit takes over, you're, you, you actually do stammer with your lips? You may repeat a word over and over and over in the Holy Spirit, because that's, that's the groanings, that's, that's God... Uh, uh, using your vessel, God the Holy Spirit, using your vessel to, to literally go deep, you know, in, in that realm. And it says, in another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, to the church meaning, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. I've had that, you've had that. When we pray in tongues and the Holy Spirit is really in charge at that time, there's such refreshing, there's such strength, there's such rest. I have seen where in, in, my, in my times when I, just a few days ago, praying for the sick, when I begin praying in tongues because God's presence has become real and, and such t uh, tangible, that that's when the, when the healings break loose because people join me in that beautiful worship. And sometimes I'll say, pray in tongues with me, and they start praying, and that's when the word of knowledge just wham, wham, start going, and people get healed very quickly because tongues ignites the anointing, intensifies the anointing. And so it says it'll bring rest to the weary, and it brings refreshing to you and I. And how I've 
and you have experienced it. Another thing that really happens is when we get in that realm in the spirit, you know, I, I really feel the anointing right now to pray that God will fill you. Lord, fill them. Fill and empower your people, Lord. Let that gift operate in them today. Today, Lord, with such strength and heavenly power. In the glorious name of Jesus. Lift your hands and just receive it. In the glorious name of Jesus, Lord. This Monday, let this gift, Lord, come alive in them. Let the gift of tongues come alive in your people today, Lord. That they'll see victory after victory. Refreshing after refreshing. In Jesus' name and God's people said, Almighty, Amen. All right, look now with me at Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18 because it brings victory over the devil. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit because he just talked about you take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He's been talking about the the armor. He's been talking about defeating the enemy. And now, now he says you pray with in the spirit and watch with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So here we see that it, it, it brings victory, glorious victory over the enemy when you pray in tongues. Here's something else. It, it, it literally causes singing in the spirit. Praying in the spirit ends up with singing in the spirit. And singing, dear Lord, I love this. And singing in the spirit is, is something we don't, we don't see today in churches. We see it in our private prayer time. I do, you do. But in the church today, it's, it's rare. We used to see it all the time back in the 70s, uh, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s. I'm sure it's still there, but we need to bring it back. Now, in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 14, let's go to verse 14. And it says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then, verse 15, I will pray, and this is where we decide, I will pray with the spirit, I'll pray with the understanding, and I will sing with the spirit, and I'll sing. So here we see that praying in tongues releases melody. It's called the song of the Lord. And when the song of the Lord begins, it is really powerful. So let's look, please, quickly, Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians 5. Because in Ephesians 5, Paul talks about this without actually mentioning it. Because he says, in Ephesians 5, 18, he says, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. Speaking to yourself, that's the song of the Lord. And spiritual songs, well, you know, spiritual songs means songs of the Spirit. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So the infilling of the Holy Spirit that brings about tongues now brings about the song of the Lord. Singing, it says, spiritual songs. Singing making melody in your heart to the Lord. It goes from speaking to singing because it says speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, and now it goes into spiritual songs, singing melody in your heart to the Lord. So I've, I've seen that happen back years ago in the catacombs all the time. And in OCC, people would just start singing in the Holy Spirit in such a blessed, precious way. Um, Hebrews 2, I've got to stop now because I'm almost out of time. We can, listen, I'm going to continue tomorrow. Promise to be with me now. You promise to be with me and tell your friends about this. Because tomorrow I'm going to pray that the Lord will fill everyone fresh with the Holy Spirit. Because we need it how we need it. Ephesians 2, because somebody may have just said, well, you know, why don't you pray now? Because I want the word in you first. I want faith to, to rise within you through the word first before you can receive anything. Remember, faith comes by hearing, okay? Not by praying. <laughs> faith comes by hearing. Hebrews chapter 2, you like that, didn't you? Hebrews 2 and verse 12 says, saying, I will declare your name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praises unto thee. So here we see singing in the spirit. It's where the Lord is singing now. 
Because so when, when you start singing in the spirit, the Lord takes over. Takes over tomorrow. I'm going to deal with more of that in the life of David. Did David sing in the spirit? I'll show you that he did. Absolutely. And I want to show you how important is not just praying in tongues, but singing in tongues. We have a lot to talk about. Please make sure tomorrow you're with me. Okay, let's pray. Wonderful Lord Jesus, I thank you for your blessed word, Lord. I pray you'll be real in your people's lives. Meet every need today in their hearts, in their life, in Jesus' glorious and wonderful name. And God's people said amen. Now, tomorrow, once I'm done with the teaching, I am going to pray that God will fill you afresh. Be filled with the Holy Ghost afresh. Now, it's time to give. Listen, don't shut me out. Please, please, please listen to me. Prophecy is being fulfilled so fast. Yesterday, yesterday, the foreign minister of Israel met with the foreign minister of Libya. This is big news, big news. But the foreign ministers of Israel and Libya now met in Italy, secretly. That's massive prophecy. And I'll explain that more later. But please, please hear me out. There are signs today in the heavens we haven't seen before. There are things happening in the universe we haven't seen and heard of before. And for the first time now, we're seeing the beginning, the beginning of what Jesus said. There'll be signs in the heavens that are happening. Now, the coming of the Lord is so near. I think all these are signs to us, the church. Get ready for the coming of the Lord, especially when you hear about signs in the heavens that are happening now. Look it up. It's all there. Please, it's time to serve Jesus with all our hearts. It's time to give to the Lord's work with all our might and with joy, with joy. The gospel has to be preached, saints. We are accelerating our efforts as a ministry right now in reaching the lost. I'm traveling more than I have in a long time. And I will continue to travel. I go to Seattle in a few days. I go then to Houston. Then we have a big conference in Orlando. Then we have another conference in, in our fire conference in Dallas. And then we go from there to Israel. I'm in Israel in October. And uh, it, it, then I go to Portugal. And other countries are just opening up wide open. I'm going to be in Kenya. I'm going to be in, in Uganda. I'm going to be in Nigeria. I'm going to be in Ghana. This is all coming up the next few months. Massive crusades worldwide already. We're, we, we are planning now by the invita invitation of the government of Kenya that I will hold a massive crusade with a million people or more in every service in Nairobi, Kenya. Coming up. Then from there to Uganda. Same time. Then from there to Ghana, it's just exploding with joy. I'm taking it. I need your help. I need you to help me do what God has called me to do. And I don't have many years left on me, okay? I'm 71 years old almost. I want to give everything I got for the Lord right now. I want to spend and be spent for him. So as long as I have, I'm going to take it and use it for God's glory. Get the gospel out. Get the message out. Strengthen the church. Help the new upcoming young people. Prepare them for the future. But today the Lord has opened new doors. I didn't expect it to happen. Believe me, I did not expect it to happen. And I'm going to continue coming to you every day. If you want me on every day, you have to give. I'm telling you, you have to because and I'm not apologizing because without you giving, I can't do this. I cannot do this. So let's give to God and we have to give anyways. Because it's God's work, it's his glory, it's his name, it's his cause. Whether you give to our minister or somebody else, I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. We have to give. It's the law of God. He said, give. He, he, he didn't say when you feel like it. He said, give. It shall be given to you. With the same measure you give, God will, will reward you. The, the harvest always comes when we sow seed. So please, sow, sow your seed today with joy, generously. Okay, the doors are open. Let's do it for the, for the Lord together. You will receive the rewards, I promise you. All right. You can give on the platform you're watching me on. You can go to our website, benihin.org, or you can simply text 
BHM45777. And tomorrow, continue with this powerful teaching, Why Pray in Tongues. Love you. Bye-bye. Benny Hen Ministries has stayed on the cutting edge for the past five decades. The Lord made it clear that keeping and storing all archives and resources should be a top priority. Thus far, we've rescued and digitized 10,500 of the 13,437 tapes from the past half century. Pastor Benny's legacy, life's work, calling, and anointing will be preserved for generations yet to come. Nearly 50 years ago, this great adventure known as Benny Hen Ministries began with one voice. Today, that one voice continues to be amplified over and over through every possible means. What happens next will be the greatest blessing of all. Isn't it wonderful what the Lord has done? And to Jesus be all the glory. I wanted to show you this beautiful report about the digitizing of thousands and thousands of hours already of the great meetings from the past because we want to keep them for our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. So we need your help still. So thank you, thank you. I just wanted to show you that your money is doing the job. What you gave in the past is really making it happen. But let's keep doing it for the Lord, please. This is for His glory, because now it can go to every nation on earth, in every language on earth, because of your help. All right, you can give right now on the platform you're watching me on, you can go to our website, benihim.org, or you can simply text BHM45777. So thank you for loving, thank you for giving, and let's keep glorifying our wonderful Savior. Much love to you. Thanks again.